Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and members of Missouri Senate Lutheran Churches from North Dakota and Minnesota. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the fifth Sunday in Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 12b to 20. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, who, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say, Amen, to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, but be, be not infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Imagine a burning hot coal touching the skin of your lips. How do you feel? Isaiah does not appear to feel any pain. The coal purifies his lips, but it does not hurt him. God uses the coal burning on the altar in the temple to cleanse the lips of his prophet which raises the question, what is the proper reaction to coming face to face with the living God? In Exodus 33:20, Moses is told by God that he cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. As sinners, we have all been separated from God's intention for us. <clears throat> we are only sinners who deserve nothing but the sinful world we are surrounded with and the consequences of it, sin, death, and the devil. When we turn on the local news, we hear stories of murder, theft, earthquakes, hurricanes, and all sorts of other tragedies. It is easy to think we deserve better. We have an expectation that the world should be better than it is. Something, sometimes this can be misconstrued by ideas that mankind is basically good, or at least as good as we are bad. Yet this is not what we find in the Bible. We see that while we, ha we were made good, our sin has completely separated us from God. Isaiah understands this when he laments upon being brought into the presence of God. He says, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Likewise, Peter recognizes in the Gospel reading from Luke who Jesus is, for only by recognizing Jesus as God could he offer his confession of his unworthiness to be in the presence of Jesus, when he says, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. When we come into the house of God, we are called to come with a spirit of contrition, recognizing with the saints who have come before us that we are sinners who are not worthy to be in the presence of God. We should be struck down, for we are not worthy to be in his presence. Yet we are not struck down. We deserve nothing but condemnation in hell. Yet this is not what we see God give either Isaiah or Peter. In both cases, he uses them despite their sinfulness. In Isaiah, God condemns the people of Israel. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but the bruises and sores and raw wounds. Of all the sins that Isaiah picks out, he is most concerned with having unclean lips. Why is this? James 3.2 tells us, We all stumble in many ways, if anyone is never at fault in what he says. He is a perfect man, able to control his whole body. This tells us what it means to be a people of unclean lips. It also tells us a great deal about how we are to live our lives. What we talk about impacts what we think about. What we think about influences how we act. If we do not say anything which is damaging to our neighbors, we are un unlikely to do anything that is harmful to them. When we say kind things about our neighbors, it is easier to do good things for them. Brothers and sisters, we are also a people of unclean lips. If we use the name of Jesus in vain, it is more difficult to sing his praises. The way we talk about others changes how we think about them. When we say good things about our neighbors, we start to think about them in a more positive light. When instead of profaning the name of God and blaming God when things don't go as we desire, we instead proclaim the great things which he has done for us we will end up reflecting on the great grace he has shown us in other areas of our lives as well. How we speak changes how we act. How often have you heard the name of Jesus profaned recently? Have you been guilty of doing so yourself? It is often quoted that we should practice what we preach. Our actions should certainly match our words. Today's text shows us that the converse is also true. We should preach what we wish to practice. If we do not speak evil things with our lips, we will not lead others into error, and our thoughts both, in, both influence our words and are influenced by the words which we speak. When our words come from our desires, they often deride others and profane the holy name of God. Yet when our lips have been cleansed through the graces given by God, the Holy Spirit is able to use our lips to speak his message. When we come to him in fear, recognize our sinfulness, and repent of all our actions which separate us from God, he cleanses us much as he cleansed Isaiah. Not with a burning coal, 
but with the means he has promised his church, holy baptism, confession and absolution, and the Holy Supper, and in his holy word, like the burning coal which came from the altar of God to the lips of Isaiah, the gifts come from God to us. They are nothing we deserve. They have been given to us nonetheless. Baptism has been given to us as a gift which washes us of our sins, and through water and the word of God, we are adopted into God's own family. His very name is placed upon us. We have become children, not through anything we add or bring, but only through the grace God promised us long ago through the words of the prophet Isaiah, that though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. We see, the, this, imagery, we see this imagery reemerge in Revelation, where the saints in heaven point to the cross of Jesus, when they're, where their robes have been washed in the blood of Jesus, which makes them white. In confession and absolution, we hear the pastor proclaim that our sins have been forgiven, and we have the assurance that our sin is forgiven as surely as if Christ himself were there to forgive our, our sins. Jesus tells us in John's gospel that if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So when we hear our pastor speak the words of absolution, we have the assurance that our sins have been forgiven us. If we are especially troubled by a sin, we even have the ability to privately confess this to a pastor to hear the assurance that God has forgiven even that sin which troubles us. Here the imagery of the burning coal comes back to mind. Sins that trouble us elicit our ability to recognize with Isaiah and Peter that we are not worthy to be in the presence of our holy God. Yet through his great mercy, he atoned for our sins on the cross. We have been made white as snow, not through our merit, but through the merit of Jesus Christ. Likewise, in the Holy Supper, Jesus comes to us to purify us. We have already confessed our sinfulness before him. Once again, he presents a gift to us through his holy church. He gives us his true body and blood and of his son Jesus, in, with, and under the bread and wine. We taste and see the mystery of the incarnation displayed before us once again. The God of all creation came to us in the second person of the Trinity, took on human flesh, and offered himself for us on the cross. Our lips receive the forgiveness given to Isaiah, not with a burning coal, but with his very body and blood. We are united with God, not through anything we do, but through his coming to us, as he has promised us in his word. The imagery of the burning coal from the altar of God brought by one of God's angels to purify the lips of Isaiah presents us with a powerful image. We see the holiness of God. We see the prophet's unworthiness to be in his presence. And through the prophet's unworthiness, we see our own unworthiness. Yet we also hear the absolution of God given to Isaiah, that although he has unclean lips and lives among a people of unclean lips, he is still called to serve God's purpose. Each of us is also called to hear and follow the call of God. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we may each say with Isaiah, Here I am, send me. For even though none of us are adequate to live as we should, God purifies us and washes us clean so that, we may use, so that he may use us to accomplish his purpose for our lives. While we are unlikely to see God enthroned on high when we go into a church, he is there where the preaching of the word of God is where the word of God is rightly preached and the gifts of God are administered. He presents us with all that he all that we need because he loves us and desires to purify our lips as well as the entirety of our being so that our words and deeds may reflect not our will but his will that our lips may be touched by the Holy Spirit that our words reflect Christ's will instead of our own fallen will. Thanks be to God, we know that he will purify us, unclean vessels, and lead us to everlasting, everlasting life with him on the last day. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord, may the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on the LCMS Church in your area, please visit the North Dakota or Minnesota North District websites at the addresses on your screen, or log into www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, North at 8821 Fifth Avenue South, Fargo, North Dakota, zip code 58103. It's through your prayers and continued support that we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the North Dakota and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Thank you for your support. Main Street Living North is produced in cooperation with Grace Lutheran School. Since 1911, Grace Lutheran School has inspired students in grades pre-K through grade 8 to embrace a devotion to Christ and a love for learning. So many things here I felt like I got to do before I would have if I would have gone to a public school. We had, especially in music class, we used recorders. I remember learning those first or second grade and um, third or third grade and that was just really fun to really jump into that musical um,
um, experience. There were a few years that I didn't really like to do it. I thought it was not very cool, but then I got into it and I like it a lot now and I hope to continue with that. I started the clarinet here in fourth grade. I remember the day that the music teacher brought the instruments in and we all tried them out and the clarinet just kind of, she's like, oh, that, that definitely fits with you. And so I played all through high school. We go out and uh, play for churches and we sometimes play for chapel and we've uh, been playing for graduation a couple of years now. I, I still remember all the lyrics to the songs of the musicals. I could sing them. Um, there, there was just such a buzz, you know, that would go around in the school when you know all the students, all the classes were preparing for that. And I remember, you know, getting on our costumes for Ansylvania and being in the classroom with all your classmates, and you know, feeling that excitement to put on a show for everyone. And um, it was always around Jesus too. They never forgot. You know, it's not just about the presents at Christmas. We were talking about Jesus every year. I was in Ambassadors uh, Choir and in band for um, all of, for all the years that I could be. I got to join the high school band, I remember, a year before I should have. Um, just because I already had that experience already, I'd been playing for a few years already, and uh, so I just was a little bit ahead. I never really had a hobby as a kid, and um, so I was always trying to find something, and through, through the music department here, I definitely found something that I love. Grace Lutheran School is located at 1025 14th Avenue South in Fargo, North Dakota. Grace School provides Christ-centered education for students in grades pre-K through grade 8. Visit us at gracelutheranschool.org.